Game of Thrones episode two just allowed ourselves the indulgence of watching it on Easter Monday. Yeah, boy. We didn't. It's funny. I was thinking, oh, we've got to wait until tonight when it's on television. So if you haven't seen episode two Game of Thrones and you're waiting to watch it at nine o'clock tonight on Sky Atlantic, stop watching now. Yeah. The spoiler review. And if you hear strange squeaky sounds in the background, it's a Peter Dinklage-like oh. character in the garden. Shh, I can't say that. <laughs> anyway, so episode two. Yes. Started with our dear, wonderful Jamie Lannister. I thought they, I didn't know for a minute there whether they were going to sort of, you know, hang him out to dry. What did you think? I didn't know what was going to happen. No. I was worried because I, I like Jamie. I love Jamie. It's I think better, a, I like him more now. I didn't like him at first. Obviously, he was a bit of a twat. Oh, he's a total twat. And he was the one who threw, as we've now discovered, his name is Bran, the chap in the wheelchair. He was the one, of course, who threw him out. And that's how it and ended. And had sex with his sister. And had sex with his sister. But of course, the first episode ended, didn't it, with them both looking at each other? Yes. With, with Bran staring at him, sort yeah. of emotionlessly. He's growing on me, the emotionless chap in the, in the yeah. wheelchair. Yeah. Uh, yeah. There's an air of, you accept him as this sort of oracle through which information is coming, though you don't really know if it's information or not. Yeah, I mean, sometimes I feel like it's good, his emotionless yes. kind of creepiness. Yeah. But sometimes I'm a bit like. You want to slap him? Yeah. Yeah. Well, anyway, so there's Jamie standing in the court. Yeah. There's obviously, what's her name? Gwendolyn, actress, woman, yes. the, the knight. She's Gwen looking on, looking a bit. I there's like something that. going on there. I like, what do you think of their relationship? I really like their relationship. It's a friendship, because, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, because one of my problems with Game of Thrones yeah. is that, you know, whenever there's a hint of a relationship, they always have to have sex or something. Yes. Whereas with this one, I, you're, not, you're still not sure if they're particularly lovers. No. I, obviously have strong feelings for each other and they haven't had to do anything and their relationship's so adorable, I find. Well, it I makes... really want them to get together. Well I, I agree. Well, I kind of do and I kind of don't because it's made all the stronger by the fact that every relationship in this end has some sex in it. Yeah. And but their but... relationship seems so much more special and, yeah. and founded on a mutual sort of respect yeah. um, and mutual appreciation. But anyway, yeah, so we had this scene where Jamie unfortunately came empty-handed, didn't he, without his sister yep. and uh, just his one hand. Yeah, well, he's uh, realised that Cersei's mental. Yeah, well, this episode is notable for the fact that Cersei wasn't in it at all. Oh, yeah, of course. She wasn't in it for one minute. And she was in it for a very small amount of time in the first place. Yeah, they must be back. She's really going to come into it, then. She's really going to come into it. I've got this funny feeling that although Cersei's thrown the cat amongst the pigeons by not turning up, she's somehow going to be instrumental in saving them all. Yeah. I've got that funny feeling. I think where the horror lies in this is with Daenerys, but we'll get we'll get to that in a minute. Um, so yeah, well basically it starts off with Jamie yeah. coming in empty one handed. <laughs> yeah. Um and basically saying that he wants to join their side. Yes. And he also breaks the news to Daenerys that Cersei isn't planning on bringing helping them. So she lost trust in Dinklage. Yes, yeah, so Dinklage. Tyrion. Yeah, Tyrion. So Dinklage is no longer Cersei's. Uh, no, uh, Daenerys. Daenerys is kind of, you well, know, impervious. Well, she doesn't trust him as much. Yes. Although by the end of the episode, she was back to totally trusting well, he, him. Yeah, because what's his, uh, Ian managed to convince her. This is where I love Ian Glenn. Ian Glenn. I forget his character's but name. I was getting really worried that they were going to kill Jamie because there was quite a few people there that didn't like him. Yeah. Because what made it terrible was obviously he's the Kingslayer and he killed Daenerys' father, even though Daenerys didn't like her dad. I know. She decided to be triggered about it. Yeah. Um, and Sansa, obviously, it fought, fought her. Well, we all know that he threw Brad yes. out of the window, but nobody else knows that. No, that's true. Um, and Brad's kept that under his, yes. under his wheelchair. And when, you know, Tyrion was like, no, he's my brother, I trust him. And then when da Daenerys was like, well, you said that about yourself. I was like, no, yeah, but I he thought... really is a good person. Yeah, yeah. Don't do this. Don't and then Gwendolyn saved us, didn't she? Yeah, she saved did. Saved him. She did. And us. Yeah, yeah, that's right, because she stood alongside him and said he's the most trustworthy. And yeah. I like Jamie's narrative arc. I yeah, think he's had a lot of... Account to a great redemption. Yes. Isn't he? Because he, he was really horrible at first. He was really evil. Yeah, he? And, and even in this episode, he goes up to Bran in his wheelchair under the really beautiful tree. And I have to say, I want a tree yeah, with red tree leaves and white beautiful. bark. It's a beautiful thing. Um, but he goes up to him and even tries to make amends, doesn't he? Yeah, but Brad... Brad, or is it Bran? I Bran, keep saying Brad. Brad, it's Bran. Bran, Bran. Um, keeps, he just says, I don't feel anger towards, I don't really feel anything. Doesn't feel I'm anything, not me does anymore. He? He's basically, I'm not anything. Yeah. That's odd, isn't it? It's I, because of all of that. It's a bit like he's taking too many drugs and now he's just not himself anymore. It is. Okay. After, it's after because, it's because they've sent, it, it, did he say it's because they've sent so many three eyed ravens? What? Is I think it's a lot of him drugs? going backwards and forwards and, you know, and his eyes go white and all of that stuff. That he just did too well. much of it. <laughs> He's dizzy. 
He's dizzy with time travel. He overdosed on... Yeah, absolutely. Um, I, does content. anyone else think Daenerys is looking more and more dragon-like in She's every close-up? She's more and more suspicious. Her eyes are getting bigger and her snout is getting longer. I always put my trust in her, but now I'm like, I don't trust her at all, I yeah. don't think, anymore. I, I, I can't tell if she's good or bad. I think... I feel I, like she's so desperate to become, you know, leader of the Queen of the Seven Realms. Do you think that so? That she's going to do anything to get it. I feel like she would she would chuck Jon Snow aside for... Yes. For a well, we, to we're building queen. towards the denouement. But you're right, there was a really powerful scene with Ian Glenn, wasn't there? Yeah, where he Where he basically saves Dinklage's neck. Yeah, really. even though he wanted to be yeah. such a good... Yeah, and man. that's what makes him so the best advisor to Daenerys. Yeah. Is that he, and then he, she was like, you're defending a man who took your place. He's like, yes, because he's yes, a because good he's the right, person. And that's why, so again, there is, you know, again, for those Game of Thrones, of, you know, novices, there are good people in this. There are good people. Nadia walked through and said, are there any good people? And I said, Ian Glenn's one of them. Yeah. I think Jon Snow's a good man. Well, Jon Snow's, Jon Snow's a good man. a very good man. Oh. Gwendolyn, whoever the knight, you know, the shining knight woman. She's, yeah. she's a good woman. Anyway, so Ian Glenn, the proper bitch off between Sansa and Daenerys. What Ooh, about that? That was quite. What was that, that all was about? Quite some beef, wasn't it? Going down there. So what yeah. were they talking about again? She came so, in. So and... well, um, Sansa doesn't like Daenerys. Yeah, she's very inexpressive, all. Sansa, isn't she? She's, she's like poker she's with, face. Yeah, she's like mm. poker because face because she knows that she well she thinks that Daenerys is manipulating John because yeah. he was yeah, 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 in yeah. love with her. Yeah. Um, but they had this moment didn't they, where you thought that they were going to get along yes. because they kind of came to an agreement. Yeah, because they were both saying we're both two strong women yeah. who've controlled populations. Yeah. And, and like Sansa kind of smiled Yeah, there was a moment. And then it fell apart when she was like, but what about the North? Oh and yes, that's right. Her. And then like Daenerys just like let go of her hand and I was like, oh. It was a little bit like that moment in every family now where you're all getting on really well and you say, how did you vote regarding Brexit? <laughs> yeah. Wasn't it? It yeah. was that moment. And there's suddenly something... This was an episode where interruptions happened at crucial moments. Because there yeah. was that moment between Sansa and Daenerys and then someone came in and said, oh, something on the... Oh, Alfie Allen came back. Alfie Allen bloody arrived. Alfie, your timing Alfie. was diabolical. But you no, might... actually... Saved it might by, save things. Saved by the... Like, saved by the bell. Saved by the Allen. Saved by the man without the bell. End. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> So the proper bitch off was there. Yeah, two strong. I like the fact that we had two strong women negotiating the North. You see, this whole yeah. series has gone from yes, treating women as as pieces and, and pawns and prostitutes, but we've also got incredibly empowered women. And I suppose it's trying like to life. be like life. I mean, although it's not set in a real world no, and a real history. If you think about it, if you think about it, although all the sex in this has been yeah. horrible. However, it's not been as bad as it was in season one, was the yeah. worst. Uh, that's what it was like back then. Well, this is it. And although this isn't a back then that happened, they're trying to emulate the back then that we can relate to. Yeah. So women would have... And that's what's given those, like the, that. Yeah. the strong women in this yeah. meaning. Absolutely. Yeah, so Alfie Allen arrives. Yeah, and is basically, you know... I'm, I'm fighting for I'm you. I'm fighting for you. Even and though I haven't got a penis. Sa Allow him. Yeah, okay. you can do that. And Sansa went all teary eyed. She did, and she they hugged, him. and that was nice because they've got that bond. They're like brother and sister. Brother and sister, yeah. And I tell you, who I love in this entire series, series is the Geordie guy. I forget his name. You know, the 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 sort of the soldier, the Geordie. Well, yeah, you man, the one who's the one who's is like helping them all all the time. The bald one, you know, oh, he's yes, coming out yes, the Geordie. Yes. Yeah. He's great. I love him. There's something about him that makes me think of Alan Shearer, the footballer. Don't know why. Um, but I just, I just, I like him. Yeah. He makes me feel safe. Yeah, he's, he's really And I love the wild, wildings. Wild, wildlings. Wildlings, even. Yeah, the big ginger guy. Big ginger guy. He's so funny. And his thing with, with the Gwendolyn. female, with Gwendolyn. <laughs> is so funny. I love that, his looks. And, and I thought It's this, a bit where he goes, we're all going to die. But at least we died together. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's very goes, cheeky. <laughs> He's very cheeky. Uh, and I thought there was a lot of good writing in this. There was a lot of really good one-liners, weren't Sorry, there? Sorry, it's really like, Ian is a good man. Yeah, in my notes, I've got Ian Glenn is a good man. What else have I got? Alfie Allen's fighting for Winterwell. Love the, love the wildlings. The, ah, fan theory alert. I said this to Maddie in the yes. middle of it. I've heard it said by some, some of our subscribers and followers that someone thinks that the Night King... So the, the King of the White the Walkers. The King of the White Walkers, the King of the Dead, is Daenerys' father. Yeah, so that makes... That's... So Daenerys' and thingies. No, Daenerys' is, no, 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 Daenerys 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 father. Yeah. What about the... Shush! Die somewhere else! That's right, someone dying off camera there. Oh, um, God. Yeah, what of that? Does anyone else think that? Do you think that could be the case? I think that definitely could be the case. Do you it think? makes so much sense now. Could that be why he's really handy with dragons? 
O C C. C. And that must be why. Oh, yeah. No. What? I was going to say, why isn't he really going after Jamie? I th yeah. Well, he could kill Jamie if he's the night because Jamie killed him. Shitting hell. Jay he's got beef with Jamie. I've got a feeling that Jamie's iron hand is going to save him. It's uh... like there's something about the iron of the hand. He's going to reveal it's made of dragon glass. No. Dragon glass hand. They need to make his hand out of dragon glass. Um, I like the scene where they were all sort of in the round. It was a bit of a fellowship situation. Um, oh, yeah. And they were sort of sat around the fireplace getting drunk. I mean, yeah. what would you do in the situation where you knew you were going to battle? It's your last night, but you, know, you need your wits about you to be able to fight the next day. So it's kind of like you've got a sleepover. You want to stay up late with your mates. Yeah. But you know that tomorrow morning you've got a huge exam. It just happens to be the dead are going to come and fight you. What right. do you do? Do you have a good time with your friends and run the risk of... Yeah, probably have a good time with my friend. If I know I was going to die, then you might as well, right? Yeah, but you want to have a you want to put up a fight. You can still put up a fight hungover, no? Yeah. Okay. So hungover. Well, fair enough. So they're all Passing hanging out together around the fireplace. Like... I like that. I thought that was really strong, and I thought Sam's line about death is forget that that was death is what was that thing about the, death is the point at which you forget you are a human and all that. I just thought there was yeah. some really rich, rich lines there about the meaning of being alive, being dead. Mm. and what it means to be a man. Yeah. Um, and, and then, of course, there was that wonderful, wonderful, wonderful moment where the chief wildling, who fancies oh. Gwendolyn, <laughs> that was hysterical, where he shared a story about... How he, well, how he killed a, a giant, giant at 10 years old, then slept in the bed with the his giant's wife. wife, and she let him suckle on her breast for years because she thought he was a baby. What? So that's why he's strong... <laughs> What brain comes up with that? That's the kind of thing I'd come up Giant's with. Giant's milk sort of made him so strong. And then he's sitting there drinking what looks like milk yeah. out of a sort of horn. And Jamie's face was so... A picture. He was like... And Gwendoline's face. The night she and was just... And then his face was like, oh, better get me some drink. <laughs> oh, yeah. The Geordie goes, oh, yeah. I bet I'll have a drink then. <laughs> so he's sucking... Anyway, I thought that was, was a really so nice thing. I thought it was really clever. I thought it really... There was a, a nice amount of humour... A nice amount of philosophical thinking. Yeah. We cared. We saw the nice side of every character, uh -huh. and we saw a sort of human side to every yeah. character. Yeah. So I was getting goose pimples at times. Yeah, me too. Then we had. You oh, had proper. You were like, look at my. Arm. Yeah. When was head. that? What bit was that? When when she. Oh, was, when she, Gwendoline was knighted by Gwendoline Jamie. Gwendoline was knighted. We're just gonna have to go and get the door. Yeah, it's a Gwendoline. Gwendoline was knighted by Jamie Lannister. Because there's a subclause, paragraph one, subcategory, subclause one v dash hyphen and one right. in the night contract which means another night can night you yeah but i love that bit wasn't it because it was the wildling that was like why are you not a knight and she went women can't be knights and he was like who says that she went it's tradition goes fuck tradition yeah because so i would i would knight you yeah a thousand times he was great and his sort of there's a sort of simplistic barbaric Feminism at work in him. Yeah. It's like he wants her, but he wants well, her as an equal. Well, I think the wildlings are quite the fe quite feminist because, like, they you are. know, the women in their tribe are just yes. as strong as the men, and they are just yeah. as able to. True. And then there was a song from her squire. Oh yeah, he was a good singer. And that was a great moment. That I, gave you goosebumps. That gave me goosebumps because they did that wonderful pimps. thing where they goose pimps. <laughs> Where they slid the music as he was singing under shots of them getting ready, and then you start to think, oh my god, they're all going to jump. And then. Oh, hang on. Jon Snow decided to tell. Oh, hang on, before that, oh. we were both a little bit horrified by Arya Stark. Wonderful scene oh on the god, battlements yes. with her and Burnface and then Patch Boy, where she said, You're both a, a pair of miserable old shits, and you love yeah. that moment where they looked they at each other. They just kind of looked at you, boring old shit. But then she snoggy woggy with your favourite Waverty. Oh, Chris from Skin, she got off with Chris from Skin. I don't know how I feel about that. She was like a baby when they first met. No? I don't want her growing up that much. She did, didn't need to have. We didn't need Arya Stark nobbing blacksmith boy. <laughs> it was a beyond requirement. She was like, I want to know what it feels like. I wouldn't, do, if, I, if I was in my, if it was in my last, you know, day Series. to be alive. Oh, right, yeah. I would, that would be my first thought. I want to no. know what it feels like to get Absolutely. off the fly. But also, there was just something. It was almost like it, everyone felt in the making of this, every other character's had a sex scene, we need to give Arya one just yeah, before she heads like off into the babe. world. Yeah, but she's like how old is she? Wrong. Like, no. It's wrong. It was wrong. And he's, he's older than her. It's wrong, but yeah, anyway, so I, I interrupted you. So then so, finally yeah, we head down to the crypt. So Jon Snow, so this, this whole time, you know, this whole episode, we're like, when is Jon Snow going to yeah. tell Daenerys that they are related and he is the heir to the throne? Yeah. And... Jon Snow decides to tell Daenerys five minutes before they go into battle. 
And she is not happy, is she? She believes that he's made it up because he heard it from his brother and his best friend. Yeah. Which, if you say it like that... I mean, think... fair enough, yeah, but still. She's not going to want to... Could It could be that it was brilliant timing by Jon Snow or terrible timing. Well, we, we could... From that last, last, last shot where him, Tyrion... And Daenerys is standing, watching off the castle, you know, where Jon Snow looks at her and nods and she just goes, walks off. I'm like, that, mm, if if it was a good idea, she would have nodded back. But what they've done that's so good is we know we're about to enter the Battle of All Battles. Yeah, but she might go all funny and Exactly, so we're entering the Battle of All Battles and we know that within, behind the front line of all of our characters, there's all the, there's that tension, brooding tension between her. Is she yeah. going to turn on him? Is she going to... And there we saw little Dinklage just standing all... in the battle for battlements, all, just all looking. Teary-eyed. Teary-eyed. And the last shot, what was the last shot? This fucking dead horse. The White Walkers just The White standing. Walkers. The White Walkers hit, they, they just, their feet just came in like this. The horses, yeah. That famous shot. And there's just lots of them. There's so many of them. I don't know how they're going to do this. At all. I was saying to Maddie, it's almost like this week, the next week, is one of the most... Depressing. Depre- potentially depressing weeks in geek history. this week is going to be one of my most depressing weeks. Because we've got the my, Avengers coming. my teenage... Yeah. You're in because t- it's the end of Game of Thrones and it's the end of the Avengers. This is your coming of age week. This is the week you transition fully into being an adult woman. As every one of your childhood character... Okay, be quiet. Anyway, what's going to happen, guys? What did you think? Did you enjoy it? Did you like it? You're looking forward to episode three? I know I sure as hell am. I really am. So am I. So much.